to the Uncomplicated Perimenopause Podcast. I'm Kate Grosvenor, your friendly perimenopause expert and life coach. And I'm Gabriella, Kate's daughter, representing all the women who are nowhere near perimenopause but want to understand it better. Whether you're just starting your perimenopause journey, deep into it, or you're a loved one trying to support someone who is, we've got you covered. We'll be answering all of your burning questions, exploring the ups and downs, and sharing expert advice and personal insights. So grab a cup of tea, get comfy, and let's dive into the wonderful, sometimes wild, world of perimenopause together. And remember, no matter where you are on your journey, you are not alone. Welcome to the Uncomplicated Perimenopause. Hello, my darlings, and welcome to episode nine of the Uncomplicated Perimenopause podcast. My name is Kate Grosvenor. I'm a life coach and perimenopause expert. I'm Gabriella Grosvenor, Kate's daughter, here to learn with you all. So, my darlings, as always, I have not a clue. I feel like I say that all the time, and then I feel like, oh, maybe I may be able to say, I do have a clue, just not about this. But, okay, Gabby. Hit me with today's question. What have the listeners been asking me today? This listener's Christy. Oh, Our we love Christy. Oh, we love Christy. Christy's from Australia. Gabby always says to me, what's the difference between Australian accents and was it the other one you asked me today, Australians and South Africans? Oh my God, no, don't say that in front of Kirsty. Hey, Christy, she's going to be like, no, it's a lovely. huge difference. No, it's a huge difference. But I always know, my answer is because Australians always sound like they're asking you a question because it goes up at the end. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Christy. I'm apologising in advance. For we, we do love you. And we love you and, and we haven't ruined. Please tell us we haven't ruined forever our relationship with Australia. <laughs> we forever apologise. But We have but a lot of listeners we in Australia have, as well. Yes, we do. And we love our Australian visitors and listeners and we do apologise. But I love Australians because they're always really excited and it always goes up at the end. Anyway, so we digress for everybody else. <laughs> What's the question? Christy says she's curious if symptoms from the perimenopause carry on into the menopause, and if so, what they are. That's uh, a good one. It's a very, very good one, actually. Okay, having said it's a very, very good question, I need to slightly amend the question. Amend it. Amend okay. the question. Okay. Because menopause is actually a day. Mm-hmm. So menopause is a year since your last period. So I need to amend the question to the difference between perimenopause and postmenopause. Mm-hmm. And yes, there's a lot There's a lot of differences. The answer is not going to be as good as you'd like it to be, mm-hmm. but it's not going to be as bad as you fear it to be. Okay. Essentially, the answer can be, can be given really, really simply in that all the icky symptoms that are due to periods and fluctuations disappear. Mm-hmm. And all the ones that are due to low estrogen and sex hormones stay. Okay. That's it in a nutshell. The end. No, I'll explain. So, (laughs) and I'm going home. No, I'm not. I actually am. I know. Don't tell the listeners that. So, basically, there's some things that will disappear and some really good ones that disappear. And there's some great news. So if you're listening to this, mm. don't switch over. If you're a fibromyalgia girl or an endometriosis girl, there's some great news coming your way. That's good. Okay. So so obviously, you have no more irregular periods. Yeah. So one of the biggest issues with women in perimenopause is you can't predict your periods and you can be minding your own business and suddenly you have a whoosh of a period that almost floods Mm. And then you have, you're out and about minding your own business and you'll have spotting or sudden bleeding. And it can be quite overwhelming. And it also can be quite shaming or distressing. Mm -hmm. It can happen. And I don't know why, but there's still a lot of shame for women in it. So we kind of don't want our partners to know about it. Should should we be over it by the time we're in our 40s? Probably. Do we still feel embarrassed about blood and the whole thing? Yes, we do. And so we have this fear that it could happen any time and it could in perimenopause. You just think it's when you're younger, when you're first starting off with periods. But like I I had it leaked through the day for the first time in years and I was so embarrassed. Oh, bless you. And I'm in my 20s. But I was just yeah. like, oh no, and how am I gonna? And I was with boys. How am I gonna walk Aww. out? They're gonna see it, and and there is there shouldn't be any shame. It's so I know 
but it does. I know. So it takes that uncertainty away. It takes that fear away. It takes that shame away. It takes all that mm-hmm. side of things away. You don't have any periods. None. At all. You're done. You're done. Because okay. the whole thing oh, about yeah. postmenopause is you That's stop periods. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like I may have six drops mm. in you know my underwear every eighteen months. Okay. I'm all right. Yeah. I'll live. Yeah. You'll wear a pad, maybe a panty liner. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm 50. I'll wear a panty liner every 18 months. So, yeah, that whole side of things, that whole uncertainty, that whole, do I need to wear a thingy? Do, do, what am I doing? Am I okay? It's mm. gone. We're, mm. we're done. We're over. We're all okay. That's a good one. So it's that you started with the good news. It's all good news. Okay. Today is all good news. Well, the bad news is that, yeah, anyway, so it's not all good news, but I'm going to give mostly good news today. <laughs> okay. I'm going to focus on what changes mm-hmm. as much as I can. Okay. So other things that change, all the PMS-like symptoms. Okay. So all the ones that are like bloating, all the massive mood swings yeah. go. Mm-hmm. So the whole roller coaster, I'm up, I'm down, I'm in, I'm out. Mm. What am I doing? The whole like erratic yeah massive mood swings because in perimenopause you go I might have been slightly irrational today I might have been like slightly off balance I don't feel like that anymore Mm. I don't have that I will stab you yeah so all of that's gone I have no PMS no you think PMS is bad perimenopausal rage oh no I can't imagine another level it's like, I will stab you with a fork, come at me, person. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, I don't like when people use that word, but but that's how you feel inside, yeah. like the one that rhymes with itch, okay? And I don't ever use that word, but in perimenopause, in my head, I said it a lot. Mm-hmm. You can say it about yourself as well. Sometimes when I'm PMSing, I think, oh, I've been all right yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't like using it to other women, but in my head, mm. it was a, a thing. Mm. And that shows you how mad perimenopause and rage can be because I don't use derogatory terms to women. But in my head, woo! So severe mood swings gone, irregular periods gone, PMS-like symptoms gone, so all that stuff gone. And the whole, if you get migraines that are related to mood swings and, and period migraines, gone as well. And at the same time, while well, saying, you know, about, about fibromyalgia and endometriosis, because those are conditions that are related to your period. So mm. endometriosis, as we know, is when the lining is released and it goes into your abdomen, it goes into your intestines instead of into your, you know, yeah. all that stuff. I'm a fellow endometriosis person. I know, bless your heart. Mm. How common are these two conditions? More common than you would think yeah. and more undiagnosed than they should be. Is it the same, right? Fibromyalgia, like it is. It's what well, it's, it's not the same condition, but it's but it it's like difficult. Years. It's it, well, fibromyalgia is more easy to diagnose than endometriosis, okay. but it takes a long time, and it's one of those that women are gaslighted a lot before they're mm. believed. And doctors seem reluctant sometimes to give a diagnosis, mm. and which is really really frustrating. But in because you don't have periods anymore, because you don't have any anything that to do with those type of conditions. That all disappears for you. Yeah. There's no eggs. There's no over, you know, there's mm-hmm. no, there's nothing that, mm-hmm. you know, none of that thing is functioning. Yeah. Yeah. So none of that is an issue. Yeah. And so that whole battle mm. is over. So your menopause, after it's been a year since your last period. You're, then you're in post Then you're post the day after. Well, I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. Technically. Okay. 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 When I say all the big mood swings are gone, I have to caveat that. Okay. So obviously, when you don't have estrogen, you can still be prone to low moods mm. because you don't, you still don't have your sex hormones. So you still don't have, you're never going to get back your estrogen, your progesterone, and your testosterone. Mm. So you're going to be prone to low moods yeah. in... Not necessarily, but you're going to struggle to produce your own serotonin. You're going to struggle to produce enough dopamine. You're going to struggle to Mm. produce all these happy hormones. If you're on HRT, you may have enough of them. If you exercise regularly, you may have enough of them. If you live a life that's... I talk about this a lot in my my life coaching and and how to live your life that produces... Because I believe in helping yourself. You know Mm -hmm. I do. And how to live a life that you can produce enough of your lead a lifestyle where you can produce enough of your happy hormones through your habits yeah 
so it can be done, mm-hmm. but you are likely to not have enough hormones if you're not careful. Mm-hmm. And that can lead enough kind of happy hormones. So you yeah. are prone to low moods, but not the mood swings. Okay. Okay? Okay. Right. What else? That's a good one, actually. I thought so. Yeah, I get you. You get me. So you just have to be aware of that. Mm. And then it, that comes down to you looking after yourself and you being aware of it and you saying, well, I'm the captain of my own ship. Mm. No one's coming to rescue me, yeah. unfortunately. I am my own knight in shining armour. Mm. And I spend a lot of time teaching women how to lead this beautiful life, how to help themselves, how to understand that they can pick themselves up. And and, and the good thing is when you understand that, you don't have to wait for anybody else to fix it. Mm-hmm. And then you have all the power yourself. Because if you wait for somebody else to fix it, they then have the power to break it. Yeah. They then have the power to tell you when and how they will be in no charge. They can really fix it. No, they can't. They can't really fix it. And and the amount of power that you give them is the amount of power you give them to break it, change it, mm. withhold it, manipulate it. Yeah. So you're much better off doing that for yourself. Because mm. then imagine if you understand, we're getting a little bit of a squirrel, a little bit of a tangent here. But imagine if you understand how to make yourself happy, mm. how to make yourself relax how to bring yourself up when you're feeling sad, mm-hmm. how to calm yourself down when you're angry, how to breathe and, and, and make yourself feel at peace when you when you feel like your world is rocked. Imagine you know how to do all of those things. Mm. Then tell me you're having a bad day. It shouldn't ever be a bad day. It should be a bad hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or a bad two hours. Yeah. Or a bad morning. But you should never have a bad day yeah. or a bad week or a bad month or a bad season. You should just mm. be able to... You've never listened to the Friends theme song then. <laughs> it's like you should never have a prolonged period mm, yeah. where things go wrong. It should be, if you can regulate your emotions, mm. you have the secret in life. Yeah. People always say to me, what's the secret to a happy life? And the answer will always be learn to regulate your emotions. Mm-hmm. That's true, because if we've had a bad morning or first like really bad couple of hours in the day, we think, oh, Today's just ruined. Yeah, Today's right. Terrible. Off. Yeah, completely. People write off years. I, yeah. I had a client once that I, I absolutely adore, you know, client to my memberships, more one to one clients. And this client and I nearly came to blows once. She was on a mission and she nailed the first three weeks of the year. Okay. And then she fell off her, fell off track in like week three of January. And she said to me, right, that, that's it. January's ruined. I'll have to start again next year. And I literally, oh, no. I was like, you're going to wait. 49 oh, weeks to start again. When you've just had one bad week. I was like, you start, so well. I, I was like, literally, we're starting again this afternoon. Yeah. And I'm like, I love a rebel that starts on a Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. I won't even wait for Monday morning. Yeah. Like, are you serious? Yeah. I think we're all guilty of that, though, as well. Like, I do think that, too. People say, like, oh, I'm wait, I'll start again on Monday. Yeah. Or oh, I'm going to start work at this time. Oh, it's five past. Just wait the next hour. Yeah. Then. But why are you delaying happiness? Yeah. You shared a picture like that on your on your Instagram recently, and I loved it. Don't postpone joy. No, why? I loved it. Be happy now. So true. Who are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Like, mm. what can you do in the next hour that brings you joy? Yeah. What can you do in the next 20 minutes that'll make you happy? Yeah. Like, why are you vegging? You're a big gratitude person in oh, general I as am. well. So it's, it does help. Like, gratitude journals and the ones that you gave my sisters and I, they yeah. just, it changes your whole perspective of how you wake up and go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. Yeah, yeah. So there's a misconception that when people don't know me, mm. they think I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Yeah. And the reason is because I, you know, I have a, a reasonably posh accent. And yeah. you help other people. So they think you must have it all. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, yeah. I, you know, I'm an educated human and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, I have a nice house and stuff. And they think that I must have a silver spoon. And they don't realise that I grew up with an alcoholic mum and that my dad left. And mm. I've looked after myself since I was 15 years old. So I put myself through uni. Mm. I survived domestic violence, as yeah. you know. Um, you know all too well, unfortunately. You raised your kids. I raised my kids. I did that. And we're pretty darn cute. You're pretty darn <laughs> awesome. And this is who I am as a human. And I wasn't always this calm, together person. I have been through it. But you've learned to regulate your emotions. I have learned. That's it. That's it. And the reason that I am who I am, and I'm so grateful, is because I know what it's like not to be mm. okay. Yeah. I mean, you remember back to 2016 when mm. 
I always tell this story of when, when I used to live, basically my bedroom was a hovel. Yeah. When you couldn't actually get to my bed yeah. because the floor of my bedroom was so messy mm. that you'd have to almost like throw, hurtle yourself <laughs> across stuff to actually... And people don't believe me when I say this. So if you saw my bedroom now, my, my bedroom is... Like every girl's dream bedroom. It's, it's like literally... it's like the Barbie house for grown-ups. Yeah. Right? It's all white and nude. And it's so wow on the eyes and everything is has its... Oh. It's a thing of beauty. It's lovely. I make my environment stunningly beautiful. Every room that I inhabit has to be gorgeous and beautiful. And I treat myself... It's not a financial thing, but I treat myself to a beautiful environment. Including my room. Yeah, but it has to be... It has to look beautiful. It has to look beautiful and it has to smell gorgeous. Yeah. There has to be lovely things in there, fresh flowers in there. It has to have a nice smell. Mm. Everything has to be just lovely mm. because it's important, right? Mm -hmm. Now... If you go back to 2016, I used to live in a place where I used to emotionally eat. My whole floor of my bedroom was just covered in food wrappers and clothes and, and just stuff mm -hmm. and everything because I didn't care about myself. I wasn't mm -hmm. in that place. So the thing is, if I can do it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And number two, if you can learn to regulate your emotions, you're halfway there. And I can, that's what I do for a living. I help women yeah. figure that stuff out. Anyway, so... No, it all came back full circle. It all makes up that. That was yep. a good story. It all makes sense with it. Yeah. So regulating emotions, super duper important. Okay. Sorry, I've gone off on one. Again, you're not having any hormone fluctuations. You're not going to have any boob pain. So boobs, oh, your that's boobs. that's a good yeah. one. So breasts can get really, really sore in perimenopause. Oh, cool. Right. So really painful, sore breasts, sore boobs. None of that. Like on your period? Yeah, okay. but you can get it like constantly and one breast can be more sore than the other oh. and it can just be really painful and you can start getting lump. You feel like you're getting lumpy boobs and sore down the sides and then sore up here and then it's like mm. that whole stress of is there a lump? Have I got something going on? Is it yeah. something sinister? And it can cause a lot of distress. They're that bad you feel like you've got a lump. Mm. That is bad. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's distressing. Yeah. Yeah, that all goes away. So the menopause... It's gone. Yeah. So that's good. So that's gone. Okay. No more fertility concerns, because you can be in the in the perimenopause and get pregnant. Yeah. Which is like... But people can get pregnant, like, have it in their 30s, and of course you can still you can get pregnant. Get pregnant you can get 30s. pregnant in your 40s. Yeah. You could be in the middle of perimenopause. You could be 45 only having a period every once in a blue moon, be like almost at the point of menopause and, then get pregnant. and still get pregnant. Because your body like just... What? But your body is designed to procreate. So they still keep trying to give you that one last chance. Mm. So they will keep trying to give you that one last period and that one last chance to procreate because back in the day, obviously, they had to give you as many chances as possible because there was not massive amounts of chance of survival of your offspring. Okay. Because they'd be eaten by beasts or they would be taken out by disease or, mm. do you know what I mean? Like, there wasn't, yeah. not every child would survive. Yeah. So it's carried on for us now. Yes. Great. Okay, so no more fertility problems, no more need for contraception, no more need for worries. We're all good. Getting off contraception's a big one. Because mm -hmm. no, no matter what form you use, yep. it does affect you. Yep. So none of that. Mm -hmm. No more acne. Sometimes oh. in perimenopause... Obviously, I talk a lot about collagen, big believer in collagen, big believer in my own collagen, our own collagen, because it's fantastic. But you can also get cyclical acne in perimenopause. So yeah. because your hormones are not stable, yeah. most women can get much drier. Mm. But some women, because the hormones are, are so kind of like this, yeah. they can end up with dry skin, but also acne skin. So it's like you get the worst of both cases. Yeah. So that goes. That's a good one. Yeah. Are you yeah. liking this? Yeah. It's, it's a nice one, isn't it? I haven't got I haven't told you any of the bad news yet. So I'm just working on the good news. Let's just have a bad one. I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay, so all of the ones that are to do with low estrogen, yeah, are gonna stay because you're never gonna get your estrogen yeah. back. Makes sense. So the ones like osteoporosis, bone density, okay. osteoarthritis. Yeah, okay. Does okay. it get worse? Yes. Okay. Because your estrogen will deplete. Mm. So in perimenopause, 
your estrogen is doing this mm. as it goes down and it's going to continue to decline until you have none. No, that makes sense though. I get that one. So there's nothing we can do about yeah. that. This is why you can choose to take HRT or you can choose not to take HRT. Mm-hmm. Personal choice. It's one of those things where we can only say to you, prepare for this, mm. do your best for this, try and look after yourself. Now, if I was going to say to you, what can I do to help prevent osteoporosis or osteoarthritis? You can't prevent it. Yeah. But if I was going to recommend the best case scenario mm. would be HRT plus what I'm going to recommend. The other three things that I would recommend are collagen, not because it's our collagen, but because it's researched and I know what's in it and I know it's best for you. And bovine collagen, which is what it is, and our collagen in particular because I know the source of it and I know it's I know exactly what's in it and I know why it's good for you. But bovine collagen because it's the glue that holds everything together for your joints. So trust me when I say this is scientifically backed and researched. So our collagen plus omegas mm-hmm. plus vitamin D, those three things together are the best thing that you can do, plus some calcium. Meh. Okay, but at the very least, Mm. vitamin D, our collagen and omegas, if you take those three things together, that's the best things you can do in terms of giving your body the fairest chance outside of HRT, Mm. which is the the medically the best thing you can do for Mm -hmm. your bones and arthritis. But outside of the medical thing you can do, supplement wise, our collagen Vitamin D and omega is the best three things combined together that you can do to help yeah. give your body the fairest chance for osteoarthritis and osteoporosis. So that is a real thing. Plus weight bearing exercise. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about heavy, heavy weights. I'm talking about weight using your own body weight as resistance weight. We do need to have some kind of weight training, some kind of weight. You don't need masses of cardio. Yeah. When you're at our age, you do need some bearing resistance training. Yeah. So muscle is very, very important. Mm. So you do need to have some kind of weight training and some kind of flexibility. So yoga, Pilates, something of that ilk. Yeah. Those those kind of things are really, really important. So it's not just because you look cute in a pair of hot pants. Yeah. I wouldn't look cute in my pants. I do look cute in a pair of yoga pants. But yeah, those kind of things... Oh, within your power to con- control. Yeah. And I would highly recommend that people do them. But yes, unfortunately, anything that's estrogen based. So when we look at things like vaginal dryness, itchy skin, dry skin on your face, again, collagen is going to help you with your skin on your face, skin all over your body. Again, collagen will help invest in, again, omegas will help you, collagen will help you invest in good skincare. I will do an episode at some point about xenoestrogens, which we do need to talk about at some point about, we've touched them at yeah, some point about yeah. nastiness in skin products. And it's it's looking into these things and researching these things and not using harsh chemicals on your skin. Mm-hmm. But those kind of conditions that are estrogen based mm. will continue to worsen. And there's Fair nothing though. we can do. Yeah, it there's, makes sense, honestly. Yeah. So anything that, that way inclined, yeah. yeah. will will get worse anything that goes on a cycle with weight again will improve so Mm -hmm. if you gain weight near your period you won't have that but weight gain in general won't improve so if you gained weight in perimenopause you're not likely to lose it Mm -hmm. in menopause without changing your diet or without doing something different yeah so again i would just recommend looking at a protein-based diet and making sure that you're being aware of insulin resistance but that's a whole other story Mm. if you want to know anything about this i'll put a link we we launched our i launched a perimenopause membership this week it's only nine pounds a month and i will put the link in this week's show notes because all these kind of topics like insulin resistance all these kind of things i will be discussing in there Mm. so you can learn all about them as well because it's it's really really important Mm -hmm. i think that's it really i think that's probably answered all the questions i hope yeah that's answered all the questions that was great i'm feeling today like i'm feeling today i'm leaving today feeling better 
Oh, yeah. yay, good. All right, my darlings. Well, I hope that's helped. As always, if you have any questions, please do let us know. And have a beautiful week, and we will speak to you next week. Bye, my loves. Thanks for joining us today on the Uncomplicated Perimenopause podcast. We hope you found this episode helpful and inspiring. Don't forget, if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, you can reach out through our perimenopause group or on WhatsApp. For more information on my coaching, perimenopause supplements, books or upcoming events, please visit www.kategrovener.com. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, rate and review our podcast. It really helps us reach more listeners just like you. Until next time. Remember, perimenopause doesn't have to be complicated. We're here to help you every step of the way. Stay uncomplicated. Stay uncomplicated.